So it's 2016. Adele said hello to everybody by saying hello. Captain America annoyed half of the Avengers. But more importantly, Google released the original Google Pixel. So my question is, can you still use the original Google Pixel in 2020? This was the first time that Google had introduced the world to the Google Pixel line. And obviously Google had released phones before with things like the Nexus, but this time Google wanted to release a phone that could compete with Samsung and Apple. And welcome to the Google Pixel. And there was excitement about this phone, but when it was released, the design of the phone didn't have many people talking. The body of the phone is mostly metal and you can see four years on, it's a little bit scuffed up. It's got scuff marks on the side and these weird dots as well. But with metal, it is durable. One of the least exciting things about this phone when it was released was that design, like I said, and the bezels that it came with were really 2016. And in between those big bezels is a five inch HD panel. And it's got a screen to body ratio, this phone of 69 and comparing that to phones of today, which are almost completely bezel-less, give or take a notch, this phone does start to look dated. But there is a phone that came out this year that had bigger bezels and a less screen-to-body ratio. It's the iPhone SE. The iPhone SE that came out this year has only a 65% screen to body ratio. So the design of this phone is probably not as old looking as we first thought. And I like it. I like the way this pixel looks and it might just be nostalgia, but I think it looks pretty cool. The back of the phone with that metal at the bottom and glass at the top and then that fingerprint reader in the middle. I just don't think this phone looks too out of place in 2020. Let's talk about what's in this phone though. And the original Google Pixel came in two storage sizes. You can get it in 32 gigs and 128 gigabytes of storage. And it actually only came with four gigabytes of RAM. And actually I say only, that's the exact same amount of RAM that is in the Google Pixel 3s. And it also shipped with a Snapdragon 821. And this phone at the time, it was pretty snappy and it is still pretty snappy today. It can do everything that a flagship phone of 2020 can do, but just a little bit bit slower. Opening and closing apps seems to be okay and it's a little bit hit and miss about what apps actually stay open in the background. One of the most interesting things about this original Google Pixel though is that you can actually update it to the latest version of Android. So this is running on Android 10. This originally shipped with Android 7 so now it's running Android 10. It's had at least three of those Android updates and I think that Android 10 will probably be the last update that this phone gets. And even if it could upgrade to Android 11 I'd probably suggest not doing it and just sticking on Android 10 because I think that that's really maxing out what this phone can do. There are a few annoying things on this phone though that apps can take maybe five or six seconds to open and doing anything intense on this phone makes it really sluggish. So if you take any sort of long video, the phone then starts to just like back itself up a bit. Doing any other sort of tasks on this phone though seems to work really well. So going through messages, scrolling through social media on Twitter and Instagram and doing phone calls and emails, that all works without a problem. Even downloading apps from the Play Store, that seems to work really quickly. You can play Call of Duty Mobile on this, but if you do, your battery percent will drop massively and it actually takes ages to open up Call of Duty. But once you get into a game, there isn't any sort of lag, which is surprising. The battery in any phone over time starts to degrade. And because this is now four years old, I think that you expect it to be dropping quite quickly. And in fact, my battery doesn't even charge up to 100%. It only sticks around about 89%. Trying to find a used Google Pixel at this point that hasn't ever been used and that has a brand new battery in it is gonna be pretty tough. But to buy replacement batteries for the Google Pixel isn't too expensive. It just takes the know-how how to take the back of the phone off and replace the battery. The Pixel originally had a 2000 770 milliamp hour battery, which honestly doesn't sound great now, but it didn't have much to power. And one thing to remember as well on the Google Pixel, the original one, is that there was no wireless charging. So don't be expecting that if you were ever gonna try and pick up this phone. One thing though that this phone still stands out in is that camera. When the original Google Pixel came out, it probably had the best camera on a smartphone. And to be honest, the camera is still great. It's a 12 megapixel sensor in this phone, and that's the same megapixels that something like the iPhone 11 Pro Max has in their phone. I actually still think the photos that this camera takes holds up to phones like that. I'm not saying that these photos stack up or are as good as a iPhone 11 Pro Max, but they don't look bad at all. And if you put them side by side, yeah, you can then tell what phone takes what photo. But I think if you were just looking at a photo that a Google Pixel took, the original Pixel, I don't think 
think you'd be complaining about how bad it looked. I just don't think the difference between the two photos that these phones can take is as big as we probably thought. Low light photos on just the stock camera aren't good. Like you can have a look at a few here and they're pretty poor, but the Pixel does have night sight. And you know what? Night sight is okay. It was the first time a Pixel phone had ever had it as it was the first Pixel. And for something that is like a first gen bit of software, I don't think you can complain. Obviously it's not amazing, but it does the job. The Pixel also has a bit of portrait mode as well. And I don't know if I'm being weird, but I kind of prefer the portrait mode on the original Google Pixel than I do on the iPhone 11 Pro. When we're talking about the video on the Pixel though, like Pixels have always lacked behind in video ever so slightly, and it's kind of the same here. It can record 4K video, but it's choppy and doesn't look great. So if you're ever gonna record video on this, if you were to use it as your phone, just stick with HD. A few things though that I've noticed, which is a bit annoying, is like the speaker on this phone. There's only one of them. It's at the bottom of the phone near the charging port, and it's really easy to be able to cover your finger over that speaker and then not be able to hear anything that's coming out of the phone. And the update to Android 10 is really good. It makes a phone feel really different, but it did bring gestures, which is a good thing, but they are just a little bit fiddly. So I'd suggest just leaving it as the normal buttons like I have. The original Google Pixel holds up really well in 2020. It's not the quickest phone, obviously, and I think if you were to use it every single day as your main phone, it would drive you insane. It is though the perfect spare phone. If you needed to use it for a week or so, you could still do your emails, you can do calls, texts, you can go on Twitter. You wouldn't miss out on what's going on in the world. And it can also take a decent photo. And the good news is that these phones are dirt cheap. You can pick them up for $50 on eBay. So I just think that that makes this the perfect backup phone. And to answer the question, can you use the original Google Pixel in 2020? The answer is yes, but if you can help it, try not to.